Clint Offalo, John LeMessurier, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> Episode 4, The Enemy Within the Gates, featuring James Beck, Arnold Ridley, and Ian Lavender, with this week's guest, Carl Jaffe. <laughs> Here is the latest news, and this is John Snag reading it. Day after day, in this beautiful summer of 1940, the RAF fights for our survival in the skies above Britain. Meanwhile, on the ground, for the home guard at Warmington-on-Sea, it's a red-letter day. Captain Mannering, Captain Mannering. What is it, Pike? Bottoms. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Bottoms. Bottoms, bottoms and tops. What are you talking about, boy? Our uniform trousers and caps, sir. They've arrived. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Where are they? Mr. Wilson's just bringing them in, sir. Uh, give me a hand, Pike. Oh, right, Mr. Wilson. Ah. Uh. There we are. <clears throat> Shall I unpack them, Mr. Manry? Oh, yes, yes. Let's have a look at them. All right. Have you signed for them, Wilson? Yes, sir. There should be 21 pairs of trousers here. Well, there's 14 of us. <laughs> <laughs> that means one and a half pairs each. <laughs> How many caps, Pike? Um, 13, sir. Mm, one short. This could cause trouble, Wilson. Well, perhaps you could give the one without a cap an extra pair of trousers. <laughs> what good would that do? Well, they could be for, you know, a special river cross squad, sir. Once on the other side, they could change into the dry ones. I mean, only exercises. <laughs> Why only on exercises? Well, I... Uh, I'm sure the sight of you in your underpants would unnerve even the SS. <laughs> Mr. Henry, I've got an idea. Yes, Mike? As we've only got five rifles, well, supposing we let the one without a cap have a rifle all the time? Well, that will only set our rifle rotor. Oh. What's more, the man who has a rifle doesn't have a water bottle. So that, in turn, would mess up the water bottle rotor. <laughs> And I can't alter all the rotors. I agree. You've taken great pains with them, Wilson. Yes, sir. Well, they take a lot of thought. It's about time someone else drew them up. Take it in turn, you mean? Yes. Good idea. Draw up a rotor. <laughs> sir, so why don't you let me take back one of the extra pairs of trousers to GHQ and swap it for a cap? Good idea, Pike. Do it in your own time. <laughs> right, ho. Right, Wilson, we'd better sort some trousers out. Do you think it's fair, sir, helping ourselves before the others get a chance? Not a question of helping ourselves. Just want to make sure of a good fit. Oh, yeah. As commander of the platoon, I can hardly be seen in baggy pants. No, sir, quite. Quite. What's this? It's a zip, sir. Well, shouldn't it be in the front? <laughs> this one's at the side. Yes, well, you're quite right, sir. I mean, you, you couldn't have a fly at the side, could you? <laughs> it's not very convenient, is it? <laughs> Hello? Mannering here. What's that? What's that? Oh, oh, yes, sir. Ah, I see, sir, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Been a slight mistake, Wilson. These trousers weren't meant for us. Who were they meant for? The ATS. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, steady on, Mr. Godfrey. Oh, Mr. Jones, I... I thought I was going to be late. No, no, we haven't started yet. I say, you're quite a stranger. Well, I've been looking after my sister. She's had a recurrence of her old trouble. Water on the knee. Mm. Hello, oh. Mr. Godfrey. Here, are you all right? I haven't seen you for a while. Oh, hello, Mr. Walker. No, I've been looking after my sister. Yeah, she's had a nasty attack of water on the knee. You know the best cure for that? What? A tap on the head. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, listen, listen. You shouldn't say things like that, Joe. It's not proper. Gentlemen, we have good news today. We have an issue of field service caps. We also have an issue of uniform trousers. However, owing to a slight error, they've got to be changed. Now, after the command fallout, Sergeant Wilson and Lance Corporal Jones will issue the caps. Sergeant Wilson? Yes. You take one half of the platoon. Jones, you take the other. All right, sir. Yes, sir. Right, Private Walker, come and collect your cap. You, blimey, you don't expect me to stick one of those on my head, do you? You can stick it where you like, mate. <laughs> I'm just the man that gives them out. All right, then. I'll have a six and seven eighths, please. <laughs> You'll be lucky it's large or small. <laughs> oh, all right, then. Give us a large. There you are. Oh. Here, listen. If anybody's interested, I know a geezer who will alter them for us for four and six at a time. Take it or leave it. Leave it. <laughs> right, next. Now, what would you like, Mr. Godfrey? Oh, a small one, please. There you are. Oh, thank you, uh, by the way, uh, which side do you wear it on? Well, you wear it on the right side, Godfrey. Well, what a pity. It's, it's not my best side. <laughs> Does it suit me? Well, yes, if you're going to retreat. <laughs> You've got it on back to front, you see. 
Oh, dear. Yeah. Right, if you finish, gather round. Tonight I want to deal with the subject of enemy agents. As you know, they're being dropped in all sorts of disguises. Nuns, peasants, police. They might even be disguised as British Army officers. Come up to you. Give you stupid instructions. How do you tell the difference? Yeah, walk over. <laughs> <laughs> the main thing, man, is not to worry. If you keep your heads, you can always tell if a man is really British. Excuse, please. What's going on in the back there? Excuse, please. Excuse, please. Ah, excuse, please. What do you want? I think he wants to be excused. Be quiet. <laughs> what is My it? name is Captain Vinogrodzki. Is this the HQ of the first platoon D Company Home Guard? Yes, it is. What can we do for you? I'm from HQ Southern Command. I should like to ask a few questions, please. Certainly, sir, yes. Lance Corporal Jones, sir. carry on with the rifle maintenance while I attend to this. Very good, sir. You just come over here, Captain. Ah, oh, what is it you want to know? I want to know exactly what weapons you have. Well, uh, we've got... Uh... Uh, could I see you just a minute, Mr. Mannering? Yeah. Well, excuse me, Captain. I must have a word with my sergeant. But certainly. What is it, Wilson? How do you know he's not a German spy, sir? Well, how can he be? He's got a British Army officer's uniform on. Yes, sir, but his accent doesn't go with that uniform. <laughs> oh, don't be such a snob, Wilson. <laughs> have to be a public school man to hold a commission. This is 1940. <laughs> yes, but look at his cheeks, sir. He's got a dueling scar. There was some pretty rum goings on at Oxford in the 20s, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you could be right. But if you are, we'll soon put a stop to that little game. I'll go and have a word with him. <clears throat> and now, sir, you want to know what weapons we have. That is right. Jones? Sir? Give me a rifle. Yes, sir. Here we are, sir. Well, we've got this rifle for a start. Get your hands up. But I don't understand. All right, Jones, keep him covered. Sure. Wilson. Yes, sir? What do you think we ought to do now? Well, I think we ought to have a general staff meeting, sir, to consider our next move. <laughs> Very good idea. Lance Wilson, Jones. Sure. Come, sir. Come, sir. Now, look, Pike, if the prisoner moves as much as an eyelid, let him have it right up. Gold <laughs> cold steel never fails. They don't like it up, and we know they don't like <laughs> it up. Jones, <laughs> Jones. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I was just telling Pike, sir. They don't like it. Have a button, so you don't like it. Have a meeting, sir. Look, 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 look. You really must try to control yourself. I'm sorry, sir. It's going into action after all these years. We better make sure he really is a Nazi, don't you think, sir, before we hand him over to the authorities? Now, there's only one thing for it. We must grill him. Yes, over a nice slow fire. <laughs> That will make him talk. We used to do that in the Sudan, you know, so we used to... Jones, Jones, will yes. you pull yourself together? Yes, sir, yes, sir. We're not brutes. Everything will be done according to the Geneva Convention. I'll see you. What does the Home Guard manual say? Ah, here we are. The interrogation of enemy suspects. The pronunciation test. Ah, we try this on him. <coughs> now, Captain uh, Vino... Uh, Brian, uh, uh, Captain... <laughs> I want you to say after me a few simple English words. A few simple English words. I haven't started yet. <laughs> now say soothe. Soothe. Wretch. Wretch. Rats. Rats. No, no. Rats. I said rats. <laughs> Those. Those. Now, what would Mrs. Mop say to you? She would say, can I do you now, sir? <laughs> Can I ask him one, sir? Oh, all right, Jones. Who won the boat race in 1938? Cambridge. It was raining at the time. Blimey, he's right. <laughs> Who the devil are you? I'm Jones, sir. <laughs> I'm addressing the prisoner. I'm Captain Winogrodzki of the three Polish forces attached to the GHQ. Why didn't you say so in the first place? I'm very sorry, Captain, but it was an understandable mistake. I would call it a stupid mistake. Why should you think I was German? After all, my English is perfect. <laughs> Blimey, do you hear that, Mr. Godfrey? If his English is perfect, I should be chairman of the Brains Trust. <laughs> As you know, many German airmen from crashed planes are landing everywhere. However, the area commander is a little anxious in case any British pilots are shot by mistake. It has not happened so far, but a stitch in time saves something. Nine. Nine. Nine? A stitch in time. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Thank you. So the commander has issued an order that lone parachutists are not to be shot down before they have a chance to reveal themselves. 
Furthermore, a bounty of 10 pounds will be paid for every Nazi airman captured alive and in good condition. That is all. Good night. Blimey, what about that then, Mr. Mannerin? A tenner a time for every Nazi airman. Yes, Walker. If they're alive and in good condition. <laughs> or seven pounds ten. <laughs> if they're knocked about a bit. Eh? All right, thank you. <laughs> Wilson, have you got the patrol duty out? Huh? Oh, yes, yes. Who's on river patrol? Uh, let's see, now, uh, Jones, Pike and Godfrey. Uh, oh, excuse me, Mr. Mannering. Yes, Godfrey? Uh, I think I've got a bit of a chill coming on, and it's rather damp down there. <laughs> Well, you won't actually be in the river, Godfrey. Oh, I know, sir, but I do feel the cold. You see, my sister's been knitting me a woolly cardigan, but she's nervous nowadays. Every time the siren stops, she can drop the row of stitches. It's taken her longer than she anticipated. Yes, all right, Godfrey. It's fair isle, you see, a very complicated yeah, pattern. Oh, yeah, yeah. Walker, you better take Godfrey's place. Hello, right, Mr. Marion. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, whose turn is it with the rifle? Oh, me, sir. Me, sir. It's my turn, please. Yes, well, very careful, Pike. <laughs> what about you, Lance Corporal Jerome? I should be taking my faithful assegai, sir. I'm in there, sir, as soon as I see the whites of their eyes. The whites of their eyes? Blimey, with your eyes, sir, they'd have to be painted white all over. Then you'd miss them. <laughs> <laughs> There's no call to talk to me like that, Private Walker. Just watch All right, come on, you silly old duffer. bit creepy, isn't it, Joe? What's that? It's only a water rat. Oh, God. I might have a rest. My feet are killing me. I think I'll have a fag. Put that light out, Walker. A sniper might see us. Have you gone balmy or something? No snipers around here. You're not in the flipping Sudan now, you know. No, but it's just as well. You wouldn't last five minutes out there. I could shoot a whirling dervish just the same as you, you know. Poor Blight has only had spears. It wasn't only whirling dervishes, mate. There was flies and desert sores and malaria and dysentery and jippy tummy. You should have packed it up then, shouldn't you? <laughs> we didn't pack it up because we were soldiers. There was a field marshal's baton in every rucksack. You sound as if you'd have been better off with a bedpan. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Nothing. It's your imagination. And what's the time? Hey? Eh? Oh, half past five. Oh, God. Another hour and a half. We might as well pack it up. There'll be no German planes over tonight. Why don't you keep your big mouth shut? <laughs> hey, listen. Can you hear a plane, Mr. Jones? Yes. And if he comes low enough, I'll give him one right to the seat of his ankle. <laughs> it's coming this way. You cowardly swine! Sounds like one of ours. Brave boys. <laughs> Good luck, mate! Blimey, I mean, that wasn't one of ours. The searchlights are looking for the plane. You're a bit late, chums. He could have killed us with that bomb. Yeah. Here, the plane's shooting at us. Quick, take cover. Machine gunning innocent women and children. <laughs> they don't care, you know. No, Mr. Jones, it's all right. It's one of our fighters gunning him. Oh, that's all right, then. Go on, give it him, son! You watch. He'll head for home now. Yes. One smell of our fighters and they're off. Cowardly Bosch! <laughs> hey. Hey, look up there. What's that white thing floating down? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a parachute. Shall I fire, Mr. Jones? No. No, you heard what the captain said. We've got to wait until he exposes himself. <laughs> he might be one of ours. He's landed in the water. Surrender, or we fire. Are you British? If so, say so. Shall I go and see if I can see anything? Yeah, go and have a look, Paggy. Right. Can you see what it is? No, it's too dark. Hold on. Yes. Yes, I can. Hey, he's coming towards us. Hey, do you think I ought to fire, Mr. Jones? Uh, just a minute, Pike, just a minute. I'll give you one more chance. Halt or we fire. All right, Pike. Let him be. I think you got him. <laughs> Look, there's something white floating in the water. 
I think I've killed him. <laughs> I hope not. That's ten quid down the drain. <laughs> Hold on, I'll go in and get him. Ten pounds would be very nice, wouldn't it, Mr Jones? Yes, if we really got him. Hey! What is it, Joe? You shot a ruddy swan! <laughs> Killing swans is against the law, isn't it, Mr Jones? Yes, that's serious, that is. Long do the king swans do. What are we going to do with it? I'm going to take it home. Pluck it, truss it, dress it. Hang it up for a few days, then I'm going to roast it with some potatoes and sprouts. Very tasty, very sweet. And what about the king? He's always eating it. <laughs> I don't think he makes do on spam, do you? God. That's not fair, Joe. Their majesties have got ration books the same as us. Well, look, I shall have to report the untimely demise of this swan, you know. Don't you want your share, then? Well, yes. What are you going on about, then? Look, I'm going to hide it under this bush. Then we can pick it up later. Right. Right, let's get back on patrol. Look, stick close to me, Jonesy. With your eyesight, you're bound to get lost. You're no call to say that, Private Walker. Oh, you're no call on, to say come that. come on, come on. Pike, walk up. Where are you? I think I'm lost. <laughs> Is that you, Joe? Pike? Halt! Who goes there? Who are you? Friend or foe? Luftwaffe. That's not what I asked. <laughs> are you friend or foe? Ich bin Luftwaffe. Ho, oh, Luftwaffe. Oh. <laughs> yes, I thought so. You're, you're a jerry. Pike, Walker, I've caught a jerry. Get back, get back. I'll give you the old cold steel. My God, you himmel. Don't you swear at me, mate. Hang <laughs> on, Josie, we're coming. What's the matter, Cole? I've caught a jerry, I've caught a jerry. Cool, blimey, ten quid's worth. <laughs> what do you mean? The bounty. Ten pounds for every Nazi airman captured in good nick. That's what we saw floating down. You're right, Pike. It must have been a parachute after all. How are we going to get him back to headquarters, Jonesy? Well, we, we ought to tie his hands behind his back. Got any rope? No. Cut his trouser buttons off. That'll keep his hands busy. <laughs> That's a good idea, Pikey. Anyone got any scissors? Use your spear, Jonesy. Right, here we go, here we go. Oh, no, no, my hair! <laughs> it's not your hair I'm after. It's your <laughs> hey, hang on, Jonesy, hang on. He's not sure how far you're going. No. <laughs> That's cause I haven't made up my mind. <laughs> Don't do it. You're not in the butcher shop now, you know. <laughs> right, come on, Jerry. Get your hands over your head. Ich kann nicht verstehen. Yeah, never mind all that. Get your hands over your head. Oh, thank you, Private Walker. Now, keep it covered, Pikey. Yes. Right. Quick march. Lay, strike, lay, strike, lay, strike. <laughs> What's the time, Wilson? It's uh, just after oh, 0200 hours, sir. What's that? 2 a.m. All right, all right. <laughs> I know what it means. What else is that? Come in. Permission to speak, sir? Good Lord, Jones. What is it? We call it to Jerry, sir. You what? A Nazi parachutist, sir. I showed him my assy guy and he came as quiet as a mouse. <laughs> they don't like it up, them, see? They don't like no, it up, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Where is he? Well, Pat and Walker, uh, they've got him in the hall. Let's have a look at him. Lead on, Jones. Yes, right, right, sir. Here he is, sir. Ah, oh, well done, men. I must get on to GHQ as quickly as possible. Pike and Godfrey, keep him covered. Walker and Jones, you come with me to my office and make your report. Right, Thank sir. You, Fine night's work, eh, Wilson? Oh, yes, sir. Awfully good, yeah. Well done, Jones and Walker. Well done indeed. You wait until GHQ hears about this. Yeah, don't forget to ask about our ten quid, will you, sir? I'll get on to them now. <laughs> this telephone seems to be dead, Wilson. It is, sir. It's been cut off. Cut off? What by? Enemy action? No, sir. The GPO. What? <laughs> the bill wasn't paid, so they cut it off. Don't they know there's a war on? Here I am in command of a unit with a valuable prisoner, and my communications have been severed. Uh, Mr. Speaks, sir. Yes, Joan. My communications have not been severed. What? <laughs> well, there's a phone at my shop, and I'll ring them for you. Ah, well done, Jones. You go to it. Right, sir. Right, sir. Goodbye, sir. Bye, Jones. Come in. Mr. Speaks, sir. Yes, what's the matter, Joan? I don't know the number, sir. <laughs> I'll write it down for you. 
You've done very well tonight, Jones. I'm very proud of you. Oh, thank you, sir. There's the number. With men like you, this country has no need to fear for the future. Oh, thank you, sir. And you can have half a pound of liver when I come back. <laughs> thank you, Jones. Be as quick as you can. Yeah. Why, are you hungry, sir? Oh, good. <laughs> Goodbye, sir. Oh, get out. Now, Wilson. I wonder if I ought to interrogate that man outside and try and find out if there are any more of them roaming around the countryside. Yes, but you don't speak any German, do you, sir? You're always raising objections, aren't you? <laughs> Walker, get the prisoner in here. Right, sir. Blimey. What's the matter, Walker? The prisoner's opt him. He's gone. Gone? What do you mean, Walker? Well, sir, come and have a look for yourself. He's not in the hall. He's right, Wilson. Pike? Yes, sir? Where's the prisoner? Oh, um... Mr. Godfrey's gone outside with him, sir. Gone outside? What on earth for? The German wanted to tinkle. <laughs> tinkle? <laughs> That's what my mum calls it. <laughs> See, sir, when she says, uh, when she says tinkle, sir, she... she I know perfectly well. <laughs> Mr. Godfrey went with him, sir, with his rifle. Ah, there you are, Godfrey. I, I say, has he come back? <laughs> no, Mr. Godfrey. The rotter. What's going on, Godfrey? Well, sir, the foreign gentleman wanted to... Uh, yeah, I know to... what he wanted to do. <laughs> Why didn't you tell him to wait? Well, we're not beasts, are we, sir? <laughs> Go on. So I, I took him to the outside convenience, sir. And then what happened? Well, sir, it was, it was very dark, and I stayed as close as I could in, in the circumstances. You went in with him, of course. Oh, no, sir, I... He locked the door. Didn't you think that was suspicious? Oh, not really. I, I usually lock the door myself, sir. <laughs> Go on. He seemed to be taking a long time, so I coughed, sir, sort of dropping a hint, as it were. You should have done a damn sight more than that. I did, sir. I called out to him. When he didn't answer, I went around to the window back. Yes, and of course it was open. Oh, no, sir, no, no, it was closed and barred. And how did he get out? Well, while I was round the little window at the back, <laughs> I could only conjecture that he must have slipped out of the little door at the front. For heaven's sake, <laughs> now, Get after him, Wilson, and take Pike with you. All right, sir, yes, sir. Pike, look alive, though. Just going, sir. Oh, great Scott. Military police will be here in a minute to collect the prisoner. I'm going to look a complete idiot. Sir? What is it, Walker? How about if I ring him up and tell him it was all a practical joke? We're the practical joke, I'm afraid. Blitz, 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 blitz. Oh, look, sir. The captain's brought him back. Blitz, blitz, blitz. Where's not what? Ah, Captain Vine, we, we know, but, uh, good evening. <laughs> Captain Mannery, I've just recaptured this man. He says he has kept from your custody. Is that correct? I'm afraid so. I don't know what sort of an army you are in, Captain Mannering. But I don't think it is the same as mine. You still have no guard out of your headquarters, and you allow prisoners to escape. All this inefficiency will be reported. Furthermore, I shall claim the bounty for this man. I see. Well, I find your attitude high-handed, to say the least. And if you have any further comments to make, you'll find me in my orderly room. Orderly room? <laughs> oh, you mean the vicar's office? You heard what I said, Walker. <laughs> the orderly room. Right. You, Walker, and you, uh, what's your name? Uh, uh, Godfrey. Right. You two, take up your position by the main door while I interrogate the prisoner. Blimey, we've got to take orders from foreigners now. Name, Fritz Müller. Nobody can us, Marker. Hi, mister. Military police. You got a prisoner for me? Yeah, that's right, Sarge. We can't have picked him up. They're over there, see? Right. Blimey, two of them. They said only one on the phone. There yeah, is only yeah, one. Hang, hang on, just, just a minute, Godfrey. Yeah. Did they say only one, Sarge? Must have been a bad line. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably what it was. Right, you two, outside in the van. Hey, there's one here dressed as a British officer. I am a British officer, you fool. Don't sound like one. No, he doesn't, does he, Sarge? <laughs> Did they both come in together? Uh, well, no. Yeah, hang on, just, uh, just, uh, hang on a minute, Godfrey. I'll deal with this. <laughs> as a matter of fact, they did, Sarge. Listen, I'm a British officer. Here, look at my papers. Here is my identity card, my railway warrant to London for the leave tomorrow, and a letter from the lady I'm going to see in Golders Green. <laughs> You've got to hand it to them, Sarge. They are very thorough. You're dead right. Come on, you two, in the van. I protest. You are making a mistake. Can I do you now, sir? <laughs> Cambridge won the boat race in 1938. <laughs> Ah, 
Ah, uh, here's your receipt. Pop along to your brigade HQ with that, and you'll get 20 quid bounty. Oh, thanks, Sarge. Good night. Good night, Sarge. Th- thanks again. Ooh, ahoy! What's all this commotion, Walker? <laughs> oh, oh, it's all right, sir. The military police have just been, and here's our receipt. Oh, thank you. What's this? Twenty pounds? Ah, yes. Uh, no, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, that, that's right, it's two prisoners, a tenner each, twenty quid. Two prisoners? Yeah, we had a stroke of laughter. Another one turned up. Really? <laughs> How did you talk the captain out of his share? Well, we didn't... Well, he, uh... he sort of talked himself out of it, sir. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I pedalled back as fast as I could, sir. Ah. <laughs> Jones. Nice work. Your message got through. Oh, good, sir. I'm very pleased about that, sir. Ah, there you are, Wilson. I can't find him, sir. Seems to sort have of va- vanished into thin air. We looked everywhere, Mr. Manning. We really did. Don't worry. He's on his way to GHQ. Plus another one that Walker managed to round up. Blimey. You're not getting them on the black market, are you, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, quite an eventful evening, wouldn't you say? I think, as we've got an extra ten pounds, we could well afford to spend five on a celebration dinner for the platoon. What do you think, Wilson? Oh, an excellent idea, sir. Would you care to order now, sir? <laughs> what do you suggest, Walker? Well, for a five or so, I could do you a nice medieval dinner. A medieval dinner? What's that? Well, let me see. You could start off with uh, minstrel soup, followed by a crusader pie, yeah, and chips, of course, if you wanted them. <laughs> Battle or two of mead. I can't guarantee the servant when she's had a bit short supply. Nice. I think you're getting into the realms of fantasy now. Unless, of course, your missus is free, Mr. Mannering. No, no, no. no. <laughs> and to top it all off, a very rare luxury indeed. What's that? Roast one. <laughs> That episode of Dad's Army from the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessurier, Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, James Beck, Private Walker, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Carl Jaffe, Captain Vilogradsky, and David Sintar as everybody else. The Enemy Within the Gates was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snowd and produced by John Dias.